Hi everybody, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today I'm at Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana, and this is the 2022 Honda Pilot. This is the EXL trim level. And while there are no significant changes across the board, you will find the addition of the Honda Pilot Trail Sport. If you want to see my video on that trim level, check out the comments section. I will pin a comment to the very top where you can click on the link and watch that video, of course, after you've finished watching this one. So what can you expect with the Honda Pilot? A smooth and compliant ride on just about every road surface, plentiful storage throughout the interior, and better gas mileage than pretty much all of its competition. Let's take a look at exactly what you'll get on the EXL trim level of the Pilot. At all four corners, you will find 24560 tires, 18 inch rims, LED headlights, LED fog lights, and for those of you who live in Northwest Louisiana and wonder how do you make that light blink like that, I'm gonna show you how to use your blinkers later on in the video. Stay tuned for that tutorial. You do have heated power side view mirrors, and yes, the most popular question, if I don't address it, that I get is does it have turn signal indicators built in? You can see the answer right here. Now these are heated mirrors, they're not power folding, they are power adjustable, but you can manually fold those if you want to. Also have the side step right there to make getting in and out a little bit easier if necessary, but not necessarily something that you have to have, that's a fact. And under the hood of this model of the Pilot, the 3.5 liter V6, and that's going to be Honda's most powerful engine available for any of their SUVs, at least at this point. 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission. This model is front-wheel drive. Let's just take a look around here. I don't know how well you can see it because there is a bit of a glare, but here are our numbers on gas mileage. 20 miles per gallon city, 27 on the highway, a combined total of 23, and Honda says for every 100 miles you drive, you should burn 4.3 gallons of gas. And before we hop into the interior and start taking a look around, here is the remote. No changes there, but everything, of course, is there that you would expect. You can open the rear door here. Of course, you do have a remote start down there in the bottom left-hand corner, just so you know. And one change I didn't mention earlier is the fact that the EX and LX trim levels are no longer available. Let's talk a little bit about towing capacity. When properly equipped, these pilots can tow up to 5,000 pounds. That's not bad. And when you maximize your cargo space, which you can do not only by lowering the rear seats here, both will go down, but so will the middle row seats. I'll show you how to do that shortly. Here are your numbers. You're going to go all the way from 16 cubic feet all the way up to a maximized 83.9. Now, there is one little thing that I want to show right here. Let's try and get this where it's out of the way. When you drop the seats, depending on where the belt buckle is right here, be careful because it will actually scrape on the plastic right here. I want to put any scratches on there. So I always try to hold that or just make sure it's in place so that we don't damage the interior. You have some extra storage space right here. This model of the pilot is so hot the fire department's on the way. Got to say something about that noise. But there's some more cargo space right there. A little space to put whatever you want to in there. And a little bit of extra space right here also under the floor. And the thing I like about the floor is that it is two-sided. You see right here, you've got the plastic side. You also have the mat you can put over that, or you can just use the carpet. But if you want to keep that carpet clean, maybe the mat's stored away at home somewhere and you're out doing whatever you're doing, you can flip this over, the lid over right here. See how it comes out like that? You can flip that over and actually help to avoid getting the carpet dirty depending on what you're hauling around. And we'll take a look into the back seat. Of course, you're going to have the shades on these two doors in the rear seat area. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. I'll put one of them up just so you can see that right there. And the door bin right here, maybe not the largest door bin, but it does have a fairly deep section right here. Kind of hard to show that with the angle of the camera. And I talked earlier about how you can move these middle row seats back and forth. So I've staggered the seats and obviously, you know, whoever's sitting here will need to be comfortable, but there is some room to give room to the rear seat passengers to gain access to the rear seat area. Push that button, and then you'll have to push the seat the rest of the way. But there is a reasonable amount of space back here. Everybody will have their own air conditioning vent, as you can see, and multiple cup holders back here. And if somebody forgets 
to let the rear seat passengers out. They can push the button right here. The same thing's going to happen as with that button that I just showed you. And then if you want to, again, maximize cargo space, put these seats down. All you have to do is drop the seat with that lever right there. And as we take a look inside, dual air conditioning vents. This is going to be tri-zone climate control. You have all the controls, as you can see right there on the back of the air conditioning vent and then connectivity with those dual USB ports. Looking in through the passenger side door, you actually have dual door bins. You're going to have the upper and the lower, so quite a bit of space there. Like I said earlier, there is a lot of storage space throughout the interior of multiple sizes and a pretty deep glove box right here. As you can see, I don't know how well it is to, easy it is to see that on the screen. Let's get that line correct and you're going to have power driver and passenger seats over there on the driver's side and we'll show you shortly you do have seat memory I'll give you a quick look at how the models fit in here standard size water bottle and right here i always think for whatever reason of a garage door when i look at this isn't a flip top type of lid but a lot of space down there another usb port and a 12 volt power outlet and taking a look in through the driver's side door i've kind of already told you everything that's here but like i said you do have the two settings for seat memory right there at the price point of this model i think that's a pretty good feature to have you can open the rear door here of course and that's how you'll open your gas door as well which by the way that is a locking gas door capless fuel fill so when you lock the interior let me just show you real fast here i'm going to hit the button on the remote try not to take up too much time doing this notice that is locked and so is the gas door so that's always a benefit and a lot of people are concerned about that kind of thing with the capless fuel fill if you want to drive in with multiple driving modes including econ mode this is one of the buttons you will use to get there with econ mode and of course here is the adjustment. I'm not going to push that down, but you can push that down and adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. Push button start as long as you got the remote with you. That makes that pretty easy. Here's a quick look at what you have on the instrument cluster. Very easy, very simple. Not too much there, but enough to definitely get the job done. And here on the left side of the steering wheel steering wheel mounted controls of course you can go through a lot of information here we're not going to go through everything but just so you can kind of see what's there and right here that lever i was talking about earlier if you've always wondered what that is or maybe you couldn't afford it on your vehicle so you couldn't have that turn signal option when you push it into the up position see that arrow blinking to the right and then when you push it into the down position it moves to the left hand side that corresponds with those blinkers on the outside of the vehicle and lets people around you know what you're doing when you're changing lanes or turning if you've always wondered what that was for and here is one of the safety features i think a lot of people will like you have adaptive cruise control and like i said multiple driving modes you do have shifter paddles right there if you're feeling sporty with your honda pilot push button shifter tell me do you like the push button shifter do you not Tell me why and tell me what you would like to see if you don't like the push button shifter. But let's go through our driving modes here. Of course, you're going to have drive and sport and then multiple modes here as well. Let's just take a look at what you'll see on the dashboard. We will go into drive. Of course, you're going to have the D and you can go into S. And then, of course, when you push that button that's labeled snow, here's your normal and snow driving modes, depending on your situation. Well, that is very helpful. And here on the infotainment screen, let's go into reverse. We have the multi-view camera. You can take a look at exactly what you have here. If you want to see what you're backing up to and know if you're going to hit it or not, well, that view is ideal for doing such a thing. And don't be afraid of Honda's infotainment screen. I know some of you out there still have never had this kind of technology in your vehicle. It's very easy to use and very easy to learn, especially with YouTube. I have videos on this myself. But don't be afraid of it. Once you get used to it, you'll be glad you have it. You can pair your phone, of course, and take advantage of Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, which basically just turns your screen into your phone and makes things a lot easier. Push button start right here, of course. We talked about that earlier. And like I said, tri-zone climate control, single in the rear, dual here in the front. You can sync those together if you want to so that when you change the temperature on one side, it changes on both sides, or you can unsync that if you'd like. 
and heated seats. Not going to leave that on for long because it's headed for 80 degrees here in northwest Louisiana on this Monday in December. December 27th. Pretty crazy, isn't it? Now, you won't find wireless charging here, but that is an available option. You step up and trim level, you're going to find that that is a standard option. More connectivity, 12 volt and of course USB. And I think the main thing that people are probably going to want to know, what exactly is it like to drive the Honda Pilot? Let's step out on the road and find out. Okay, we're gonna hop out on the road for our test drive and I chose this particular section of road. Let me move over into the right-hand lane because it's gonna be more rough than the others just to give you a little bit of an idea of road noise. Now keep in mind, I don't have anyone to talk to. I don't have the radio on. And you hear a little bit of road noise, but believe it or not, this isn't very bad because I really have kind of put us in a worst case scenario situation. So you might be able to hear that. Let's listen for a few seconds. Now you can hear some of the wind noise, some of the road noise, but that's because this road is, is heavily washboarded out. And you can't necessarily tell in the video, uh, there's stabilization built into the camera, so it's not gonna shake too bad, hopefully. But just so you know, you kind of get an idea of what it's like to drive. So on a road trip, not only will you have, well, it's, the road noise isn't bad. The wind noise isn't bad. The ride quality is great. And those things equal keeping you alert, won't wear you out. There's a lot of things people don't consider about driving, such as the fact that when you do drive a vehicle that doesn't ride well and all that kind of stuff. Well it zaps your energy on a long road trip or sometimes even riding around in town such as here in northwest louisiana because the roads are so bad for the most part depending on where you drive but overall i have to give high marks to honda for the pilot because the pilot is a fun vehicle to drive it's easy to get around of course you've got all the great safety aids uh, blind spot monitoring and cross traffic alert and all those great features but overall handling very good obviously it's not going to be sports car like or high performance suv like but that's not what you would expect but again when you have those things that will affect the ride quality that's one reason why the pilot rides so well one thing i always like to mention you never know who's reading the comments in fact one of the primary ways that car manufacturers suv manufacturers whoever you want to say receives feedback on what they should change for upcoming models when they redesign a vehicle or maybe make some minor adjustments with a refresh is they read the comments right here on youtube so if there is something you would like to see changed in or added when there is a full redesign of the pilot tell honda down in the comments you never know what might come of that got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this model for the day and all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, check out this section of the screen right over here, somewhere over here. You'll find a couple more videos that you can watch and I'll see you there.